Some pictures must be retouched to make them print better. This is done in the art department. Other artists draw special maps to make the day's big news more graphic. The staff turns out all the artwork required on a metropolitan newspaper. But before a picture or drawing can be printed, it has to be etched on a metal plate. That's done in the engraving department by first photographing the picture through a screen. The screen breaks the picture into thousands of tiny dots. Each of these dot pictures is chemically transferred to a zinc plate. Then an acid eats away the zinc between the dots, leaving the dots to print the pictures. Looks simple, doesn't it? But fine quality engraving calls for real craftsmanship, and these Minnesota boys can deliver it. Engravings and stories are brought together here in the composing room. The men who assemble the type and pictures follow penciled layouts or dummies, which the news staff designed for eye appeal. The flat pages of metal type and pictures go to the stereotyping department. A moist piece of thick paper placed against the type gets a 20-ton squeeze and forms a mold or mat. That is an exact impression of the full newspaper page. It's used as a mold in casting a cylindrical metal stereotype. Rounded stereotype plate will fit the presses and is ready to print. Next, an elevator ride down to the press room. Where an electric eye steers each plate to just the right one of 34 black and white presses. Other plates have arrived at the big color presses where Sunday magazine and comic sections are being printed during the week. Back in the main press room, everything is made ready for the run of this edition. Ink, eight tons, are used up every week in this plant. The clean white paper is waiting, great rolls of it. Waiting for the minute hand of the clock, the flick of a master switch, and away they roll at a speed capable of turning out many thousands of completed papers every hour. These almost human presses obligingly jerk out each 50th paper to save counting time in the mailroom. Time is precious here. A practiced glance tells the pressman that everything is okay. Conveyors rush the papers to the mailroom. Every second counts. Tying machine saves still more time. Endless belts hustle the bundles out to the loading platform. The news of the day from the home front, from all over the world, is on its way, often only a few minutes after the stories come in over the phone or the teletype. But the job isn't over, not until the last paper gets to its reader. Hundreds of mail carriers distribute newspapers to farm homes. 
And there are 5,000 carrier salesmen. Your own sons, perhaps, or your neighbor's boys. These young fellows are part of the newspaper organization, getting valuable business experience. This job teaches salesmanship, builds character, develops sound bodies by regular, healthful outdoor exercise. To encourage these young businessmen, the Minneapolis Star Journal and Tribune awards 10 one-year tuition college scholarships for those who rank highest as students, good citizens, and industrious carrier salesmen. And the paper reaches its readers, who eagerly await the news of the world today. We've seen how this news gets into the paper. Now let's see some of the work of the men who get the news. Our own correspondents cover the battlefronts of the world. They follow the fleet and the air forces, the army and the marines, to send back first-hand news, news of our own Minnesota boys and the part they play in the big fight. Our correspondents roam the world. Columnist George Peterson made some 60 reports to our readers on the Alaska military highway. Along the whole route, he lived in camps and barracks, talked with generals and Eskimos, and got the first complete story of this famous highway. Editorial comments on city, state, national, and world affairs are written by men you've heard and other commentators of the Star Journal and Tribune. We believe that a newspaper should express its own views courageously. And readers should have this same privilege. This is the American way. In everybody's ideas, you'll find letters from our neighbors that often disagree with editorial views. Honest opinions openly expressed help build sound decisions. Still other opinions. To help keep the citizens of the upper Mississippi Valley informed, we bring the viewpoints of these well-known columnists. The Gallup poll brings still more opinions, and the national opinion poll, the views of the American people. And then there's our own poll, which tells us what the people of the Northwest are thinking about local, state, and national affairs of special interest here. Politics? For a third of a century, Minnesota and national politics have been covered by another well-known neighbor, Mike Halloran. Mike believes in reporting fairly and completely all sides of controversial questions. He's proudest of the fact that not even his wife knows how he votes. At least that's what Mike thinks. Food producers and consumers, too, welcome the timely information prepared by E.W. Kiekeffer, our farm news writer. Victory gardeners ask thousands of questions. Garden editor George Luxton answers them. You've probably heard him speak at a garden meeting. When it comes to preparing food, Minnesota homemakers keep up on menus and rationing problems through Alice Bennett's column in the Morning Tribune. 